Welcome to this project. In this project, we are going to build a countdown application using React.js. And there are a lot of use cases that you can implement this logic in your future project. So let's get started with it. So for our purpose, we are going to create a countdown project the days left that we are going to launch our application. And if you have seen Redemy or some sales website, they have some duration left for a certain sales um, to end. So let's see how we're going to do this one. And it's pretty simple here. We have a number of days here and hours, minutes, and seconds left. And every second, this application or this function runs as we see on the screen. So let me change the date here. So now we have four days left. And if I change the date to, let's say, 29th of this month, when I refresh the application, you can see that the number of days have changed to that. So let's get started. All right, so I'm on my terminal here. And if you don't want to start with me from scratch, we are going to start with the template, the CSS, and gonna be some few lines of code. So let's get started. So first step is I'm gonna create my React application. So this one, I'll make this one as count, countdown app and I'll hit enter. So let's wait while React is bootstrapping for us. All right, just finished installing and I have started the server and it's running on port 3001. So we are going to do everything inside the app.css file. So the app.js file. There we go. So here, let's remove everything from this file, from this component. And now let's structure our own HTML here. So I have a parent and let me give this one an ID or you can give it a class of home. I like to use ID here for this purpose. And inside this, I'm gonna have three items here, one, two, three, four items, right? So the first one gonna be the first div. And then for the first div here, I'm gonna have a parent that's a wrapper. This is a wrapper for the first chart. And in there, I'm gonna have p tag here. That's a heading. And here gonna be the number of days. Let me go this one, four days. And I'm gonna have a div also inside that. And here gonna be the actual day. So this is four days. So when I save this one, I have four days over there as you see. And for this one, let me give it a class name, a class name of wrapper. Okay, the wrapper is going to wrap the individual children. So I have the wrapper here. And then the p tag here, let me give it a class, a class name, a class, sorry, a class name of value. And then the days here, let me give it a class name of title. Okay. So I'm gonna have four items here inside that. So let me select this one, the first one. So let me call this one um, days. And then let me comment here and call this one the minute. And let me paste it there. And then the next one is gonna be the, is it, sorry, the hours, days, hours here. And then the next one gonna be the minute. And then the last one is going to be the seconds left. So comment here and call this one seconds. So let's see. Now, there we go. We have those there as you see. So let's quickly go ahead and then so let's, let's remove this CSS file. And then let's go back to the SLC and let's create our own CSS. Let me call this one countdown.css. And let's target those CSS files over here. So first of all, I have an image that we are going to use for this project, right? So the first one here I'm going to create here is a home. Okay, so hashtag home here. And then, all right, so let's go to the app and then require the CSS. So let's import the CSS as that is one slash. All right, so now we have connected our CSS to the app component. 
So for now, let's give it some background color to make sure that it has been connected. So let's see, let's refresh. There you go, it has been connected. So here, first of all, I use an image and I'm going to provide the image for you in the, in the resources. So I'm gonna drag, so let me create one component here or one file one component. So one folder here and call this one images. There we go. And then let me drag the image inside that. And the image is called bg.jpg. Okay. So now let's let me remove the background color here. And instead of that, I'm going to use the background image. And the path to that is going to be code dot and then images. And I have my bg. So when I save this one, I have it. All right, so let me add some classes, some CSS property to make it more responsive. So let me give it a height of 100 VH to cover the entire page. And then the background position, let me give it a center, so at the center of the page. And then the background repeat, repeat, I'm gonna give it no repeat, no repeat. And then the background size, let me give it a, to be cover cover to cover the entire page of the available height so when i save this one you see i have it but i don't i don't want to see the pattern around that so let's remove the default styling that is a default browser so let me give it a universal selector here and say pattern to be zero and then the margin also going to be zero and i don't want to calculate the okay i think there we go it's also, also good all right so now let's work on this ones because i have a wrapper inside the component here which is home which hold all the individual children i'm going to apply i'm going to apply display flex on this one so display here going to be flex and as soon as i do that as you can see they are being aligned like that okay and then justify content here let me give it as a center and then align align items here let me give it also as a center of the page and i have it as that all right so let's work on the individual so on the wrapper for the individual children here let's give it um display flex here and then i can use flex properties like justify content let me give it as a center and then the align items here also going to be center of the page so when i do that as you can see they have been in a row so let me change the flex direction to be column and as you can see they are on top of each other as that okay so now let me give you some margin for that on both sizes let me give you a margin of 70 pixels here and as you can see we have some margin between them and that's what i want so now that i have finished with that let's work on the value the actual values here you see so here dot value dot sorry dot value and then let me have some space here so i can work with it and for the value let me give it a font size of five rem and let me give it um font weight to be bold and then let me give it some color of white that is hashtag fff and let me give it some margin bottom margin bottom as what one rem and then the font family i'm going to use what is it cambria i use i choose this one cambria coaching and other stuff that they from my visual studio code okay so when i save it now i have this font size being applied perfectly so next is let's work on the title on the title here the actual date here as we see here so for the title here let me give it a color or the same as the ff and then let me give it a padding of 20 20 over there and let me give it a color of yellow <clears throat> let me give it some harsh color here yellow that's more and then the font size let me give it as 3.5 rem 3.5 rem and let me give it a padding of 20 pixels also both sizes left bottom left and right and the border bottom here now let me show you what i'm going to do here 
the border bottom here as you see here is some arrow here they are all using the border styles so here uh, for border border um, bottom here <clears throat> and the border bottom let me give it um, let me give it four pixels solid white okay solid white so hashtag FFF so as you can see we have that and then the next one gonna be the bottom right on the right here here let me add also I can copy this one and then paste here and change this one to bottom right and then let me change this one to also is it I use solid yes solid they change the color here to any color of your choice I think the solid this color is also good for my likeness and there we go and the last one let me copy again and instead of um, solid let me make it dotted okay dotted and then we're gonna be the bottom border left okay and let's see there we go I have it okay cool so now the styling is complete so let's work on the actual logic for the rendering and displaying the values correctly so let's go to the app and here we are going to keep track of all those states here the days the minutes so let me change it back to half days and here i'm gonna be the minutes and let me change this one to be uh, sorry hours here i always forget the hours is here and then the, the minutes also here and then is it days hours minutes and then seconds okay so let's see all right that's what we want all right cool so let's work on the actual logic so here we're going to keep track of days hours minutes and seconds so we need to bring you state here so you state so const and the first one is days right so you state and by default i have the auto import by default let me give it so the first one going to be the days and then set days as that so by default is zero that's what i'm going to give it to it as by default as what zero and then let me keep track of the minutes and then the seconds so here i'm going to be the hours and here i'm going to be the set hours and here gonna be the minute and here gonna be set minute and then the seconds and here gonna be what set seconds so all right so let's go ahead and then create the function so let's comment here let me say get this left function and this function here let's call the function name const get days left is equal to my arrow function here and for this arrow function i'm gonna get the end date the actual date the end date i want this function to end the, the days left so here we are going to do some logic here so first of all let's get the actual date right so const total date and go total here is equal to date and then date dot pass i'm going to pass the date that i pass in when i call this function and i will subtract it from date date dot pass to and then for this dot pass i'm going to i'm going to get the current date or that is the date at the time of or the today's date let me say it that way so for this function it's going to get any date that you pass in is going to subtract the today's day from it to get the future date so assuming that um today's date is let's say um today's date let's call this one 2021 2021 and then let's say this november and then 23rd right and then i want this duration or the end time or the lifespan or the date i want this function to end is the future date gonna be let's say we are doing some sales and i want this one to end in 2021 
2021 and then let's say December right December 4 so I'm going to subtract this one from the current date and I'm going to get a total date so for this total date here we can get the days the minutes and the seconds from that so let me show you how so now that I got my total date here so cons let's get the seconds from this right don't be confused about this value here because of scoping so it's not visible inside this one so this like um is is scoped to this function only okay so here let's get the actual second from this date so math dot floor we are using floor because i want to get exact value that's a whole number i don't want to get decimals let's say 1.2 days left <laughs> it doesn't make sense in this way so here let me wrap everything in the bracket and let me pass in my total here and for this total here i'll divide this one by 1000 and then module 60 so whatever has left gonna be the seconds left right so i get my seconds left and then cons let's get the minutes also left and the minutes also going to be the same process math dot floor then i pass in as that and then my total and then divide this one by 1000 and then after i divide by 1000 i will divide again by 60 and then module module 60 to get the actual minutes from that so cons let's get the hours left is also equal to math dot floor and here pass in my carry braces because i'm just make i want to make use of board math here and when divide um this one by 1000 right again let me put them in carry braces here bracket here and then 1000 because of board mass logic here, that's what bracket first. If you're doing multiplica multiplication, use board mass bracket or bracket first division comes next. That's mathematics dot. So after I get this one, 1000, then I'm trying to get the hours right. So I divide this one by 1000, and then inside the bracket, I'll multiply this one by 60 by 60. All right, I get that. So now that I get this one, I can go ahead and then get a module by 24 as that so i have my 1000 by 60 by 60 module 24 to get the actual hours so the last thing is going to be the day so cons my days left for this is <coughs> sorry guys dot floor and i pass in my curry braces my bracket and then i divide this one by 1000 and then multiply by 60 multiply by 60 and then multiply by 24 to get that so anytime i call this function so let's try it out so let's try to console.log console.log and then let's call get days left and then let's pass in the today's date today's date is december um third 2021 so let's get a future date let's say 2020 let's say that is good 2021 and then this is november and let's give it the future as 14th so let's check the console oh i guess some typo error object cannot attribute cons this left all right so where am i getting this error oh sorry use states rather so use states instead all right so let's check the console <clears throat> and then as you can see <laughs> i got undefined because it's been not being called all right so let's tell the at the time this component runs the data wasn't ready that's why we got undefined so let's tell react to re-render the component anytime there are some changes in it okay good so instead of that i'm going to use what is called set interval and call this function so set interval we're going to call is a function it's a built-in function that is going to be called a specific time that we set so set interval here and it takes a callback function and this callback function here is going to be called 
at every specified time so let's call our, our function at every second 1000 and then i pass in the set sorry get this left then i pass in the object the value the date i want so 2021 and then november and then 14th all right so let's see if there is no error all right no error found this error is for one of my ex my uh, chrome extensions so don't worry about that all right cool so now we can go ahead and then update our state so if you try let's count and let's say a let's throw the value into a and then let's console.log a and then let's see the result if our function is going to run perfectly well it's giving us undefined at every second we call this function right so let me see uh, 2021 20, 2021 20, and then 12 and then 29 let's see what we have undefined hmm. Okay, so let's console.log the values here. We have minutes and hours, hours, let's see. All right, now that our function is ready, <coughs> let's go ahead and then call this function. And we are going to use, <coughs> sorry, set interval to call this function. And remember, this function is not returning anything, right? So let's update our state here. So set days is equal to pass in the days here. And then set hours. Let's pass in the hours value we got from this function. And then let's also set minutes. Set minutes. And let's pass in the minute we got. And then what left days, hours, and then set seconds. And then let's pass in the seconds from the function. Okay, so now let's call this function at every second. We're going to use the built in function called set interval set interval is a function that's going to be called at a specified time that we want this function to run and it takes a callback function and the next argument here gonna be the time so let's pass in 1000 every for every one second this function should run so let's call the function here and then this function here let's say we want this one to end in the future today's date is December so November 3rd and then um, let's give this one as 2021 2021 and then it should end next next month december and then december 17th so if you console log the values here i'm going to get in the console so let's check it out so console.log these values minutes we get a minute here we get the seconds here let me copy them and let's console lock those values here we have the seconds here we have days and hours and then we have the hours left so let's see in the console let's check it out in the console as you can see they are all rendering as you can see cool so now that is calling every second we can now add them into the various values so for days here, let's change this one to days. And for hours, let's change this one to hours. And then for the minutes, let's change this one to minutes. And then for seconds, let's change this one to seconds. And let's check it out. There we go. Cool. 
So now we have 13 days left, and it's indeed 13 days because today's date is what is December, uh, November 11th, and then November 11th, 3rd. And we want this one to end in the next month, 12. So we have what 13 days left for this to end. All right, we have 13 days, 20 hours, 49 minutes, and 24 seconds. So, guys, here end the tutorials on the a counter application, we can improve this application to suit your needs. So thanks for watching.